Keith Wilson at the Trombo Chop at Schmidt Music. I've been getting a lot of requests to do more mouthpiece reviews, um, more over with the Dennis Wicks than probably any other one mouthpiece. So I wanted to take a play for you a little bit on one of the Dennis Wick mouthpieces, uh, in particular the uh, Wick 4AL Classic. Um, so this is the uh, cup width is equivalent to a Bach 4G, so it's a 26 millimeter. Um, you know, the AL has a little bit deeper cup, um, a little bit more open throat and back bore. So I'm going to play for you some on this mouthpiece. All of this is going to be happening on a a Bach 42 BO. <laughs> So, as a uh, tenor trombonist, the four you know size range is actually a touch big for me. I'll play on them occasionally. I tend to gravitate a little bit more towards the five. So, you know, in this, I'm fighting the size a little bit here when, in terms of my comfort. But you know, in comparison to you know other fours that um, I you know play through on a regular basis, um, there are some things I like about the Dennis Wick and some things that are a little bit different for me. So, um, overall, the rim is really you know fairly comfortable. Um, some folks have a, a little bit of an aversion to the really flat rim that the Dennis Wicks have. Um, what I find, what I do like about it is I, it feels really stable. I feel like things really lock in place, you know, when we get the note to respond. Where I find a little bit of difference with that flatter rim is I feel like I lose a little bit of flexibility. Um, I wish it was just a little bit easier to move between the partials. Um, this is, obviously, it's a fairly deep cup, and I can tell that in some of these passages that I just played, in um, particular at the softer dynamics, um, you know, I really had to move a lot of areas you would expect to, to fill up the sound, um, you know, but at the same time, we're using this, you know, much slower air profile. So it's kind of an interesting combination. What I got a little bit at times that I wasn't as big of a fan of, um, and again, I think it's really just due to the cup depth, is that the sound got a little bit airy, um, got a little transparent with that. Um, and again, that's just my air profile. For somebody who moves more air into the, the mouthpiece, maybe has a little bit wider air column to work with, then that, that response, you know, that experience is going to be completely different. Um, and again, I think owing to the, you know, the overall depth and everything um, combined with a little bit bigger cup, um, some of the upper range, I wish it, it actually responded really nicely. Even going up to the E flat, I was able to get that to work. But I did have to, you know, tighten up the aperture a little bit more. Uh, with it, and I wish it had just a little bit more brilliance to the sound, a little bit more color. Um, it felt just a little bit flat, but again, I think that's the size and everything um, working with it. Um, the lower range, on the other, on the other hand, was great. I really loved it. Um, I thought the stuff in the, you know, below the staff in particular, into the trigger range a little bit, um, opened up really nicely. Had a real, real nice amount of presence with, but still had a little bit of focus and projection with it as well. So, as always, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any thoughts about what you heard, had of experience with the Dennis Wicks, you know, something you compare it to, to, compare it against, feel free to leave all of those comments, questions below um, in, in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, consider subscribing to our channel, and you can always find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, everybody.